Paradise Hills is a trash movie. It wanted to be so many things and ended up just feeling like a pretty gift-wrapped empty dystopian story. This movie tried to be a wonderland fueled nightmare with its pretty sets and costumes, but never delivered enough whimsical thought-out anything. The movie follows Emma Roberts' character Uma, a girl that is sent to the island by her mother in the hopes of changing her mind so she'll marry the guy that basically took hold of her dead father's business. This island is an island for misfit girls to learn their place. And basically, this world is divided between uppers and lowers, and all the characters we are given a proper introduction to, except Emma Roberts' boyfriend, are all uppers. Emma Roberts' character is a cliché girl that wants to run away from an unwanted marriage. The side characters consist of Chloe, a southern girl whose parents want her to lose weight, Yu, or Aquafina, who has panic attacks, which seems to be a complete social faux pas for her parents, and Amarna, played by Isa Gonzalez, I think that's how you say her first name, a singer that just wants to have her own agency about her songs, but her label and her parents are against it, so they decided to say she's in rehab instead of this island. The main obstacle the protagonists had was to escape the island, something they forget for a week or two in favor of girl bonding moments. The movie can be summarized with positive messages such as you don't have to change who you are, I love myself as I am, I'm not the one that needs to change, and the staff there saying Mademoiselle this, Mademoiselle that, and Emma Roberts saying upper and lower to do an info dump on the viewer. And of course, in practical white puffy clothing for you to run around in. So, let's do a play-by-play -play of the movie, more or less. The movie opens with Emma Roberts singing which, you know, good for her, she, I'm not a singer, but that was good, I don't know if it's her, but I think it is, um, but honestly, during that scene, I could only think of one thing, what was that blue lipstick? lipstick for men. And the cage she had over her face, you know, okay, you want to be hot couture, sure. And then that awful bedroom Big Bird looking cosplay. What was that? I know the movie was trying to go for a certain aesthetic, but. Oh, honey. Oh, oh, honey. <laughs> and then Emma Roberts wakes up in the island dressed up in dirty 2000s clothing. Like, what was that about? Is that how the lowers dress up? Was she with them? We don't know, and it's never talked about. She then tries to run, but Aza Gonzalez rats her out. There's sexual tension in the air, and let's talk about them. What the hell? Uma and Amarna, their relationship never happens. Like, at all. It's completely one-sided on Amarna's side. But then... Uma cries when she sees Amarna's clone substitute, whatever, kissing a random guy on TV. Like, Uma kept telling her she had a lower boyfriend. She kept saying she would go with the boyfriend. And Amarna literally sang her heart out to Uma. And she never ever reciprocated. Like, Amarna was 110% there. I even thought for a second they were going to make her a villain when the scene where she saw that Uma had her lower boyfriend, I don't know his name for the life of me, uh, infiltrated in the island. I really thought she was going back to Mila's character to tell on them. She was going back to the director to tell on them, given her previous behavior. And I was really ready to get mad. But nope, Amarna ended up being really selfless and she even gives her escape route to Uma and her boyfriend. By the way, 
her boyfriend, which she had zero chemistry with. <sighs> but, you know, whatever. I was really upset with their relationship. It made no sense whatsoever. Uma would be devastated either way with Amarna just simply disappearing or any of the other girls. So it was really pointless, but whatever. So basically they try to escape once and fall asleep. Then they girl bond. Then her lower blend boyfriend shows up with an escape route. But that route fails and then Amarna gets another one. And part of their time is spent between Amarna and Uma flirting, girl bonding, and Uma going on the carousel therapy horse. The purpose of which is unclear, because I'm pretty sure everything they needed for the substitute making seemed to stem from the mirror therapy, so I have no idea why they had the carousel horse thing happening because they weren't brainwashing them so I don't know by the way the substitutes plot is so weak basically lowers get cosmetic surgery and learn how to act like them to substitute them after they are killed by the poison ivy director oh yeah I do love Mila Djokovic, in fact, this movie is tolerable, like the tolerable scenes are from her. She plays her part perfectly, you can really tell there's something else simmering under that character. But plant powers? That came from nowhere. We only see her breaking some random glass window when she gets mad with you you the character but that's it and then turns out she's a plant human hybrid that kills the girls once the substitutes are ready <sighs> well mila djokovic sings a lullaby did you know that it's quite nice so the obstacles that the characters have are the routes to leave the island then it's Amarna disappearing, and finally they try to escape the three of them, only to find out they were actually being sort of cloned and then disposed of. By the way, Chloe's substitute voice? Man, they didn't even try to make her sound the same, huh? Oh, and Uma's speech when they find the substitutes? That her substitute would have to live with the burden of knowing she had a loving father that died and that she still mourned for, aka that they are people too, that they had lives, that the substitutes were stealing. Like, Uma, these girls are here because they don't even have food to put on their table. I don't think they care much about you losing a father. In all honesty, that, that, that speech was just... But you know, it, it worked. So, I guess there's that. And then Uma and her clone defeat the director playing the who's who game. And Uma finishes the director with the victorious words, I am me. And as you guessed it, every side character dies. Oh, and her boyfriend was actually working for her mother, but not really. Honestly, I don't care. Finally, Uma and her clone substitute person row away into the sunset. And the film could have finished here, but no. Then we go back to the beginning. The wedding at the beginning, there was not one Uma, but two. One with the wedding dress, and then the one with the big bird cosplay. That was the real Uma. And she kills the guy that presumably also killed her father. I don't really know. I, or made her father kill himself. I don't know. She just kills him. And then real Uma runs away in her broccoli looking cloak and now substitute Uma can live her life her upper life 
This movie wanted to be so woke and Wonderland themed. And I do love Alice in Wonderland, like favorite story, my favorite children's story, my favorite story since I was a kid. But this was such a disservice and the obstacles of leaving the island were fine, but the climax with the plant director, I just don't have any words. <laughs> That's it. I hope I saved you guys a few minutes or if you want to go and see um, Emma Roberts, Aza Gonzalez and Mila Djokovic sing, watch this movie, I guess. Yeah, thank you for watching and bye.